think we met through Altrusa. I can't remember the first time I set mm -hmm. eyes on you. Right. I feel like I've known you forever, so right. I don't know. Right. I don't know how I'd go back and find that. Yeah. Because otherwise, that I was working full time, you were working full time, and I don't know how we would have met. It's possible that I was at Grandview before Altrusa uh, came there. Okay. But I yeah. would not have presumed to have gone into the kitchen and right. talked to you mm -hmm. or right. sought you out. But because yeah. there was an Altrusa meeting before I joined, before I was asked to join. Uh, oh, I definitely was at that. Okay. I do remember that. Yeah. I joined Altrusa in eighty eight. And I was there in eighty five, so I was in Altrusa first, but I came I, I'll be honest, when I came into Altrusa, I came to promote my business and to get more uh, exposure in, in town because I had a new business. Why did you come in? I came in because I was new to the area, did not know people, and I had tried another women's organization that was just boring. And when Altrusa came for dinner at Grandview, I said, these are the movers and shakers. These are the people that mm -hmm. I want to be a mm -hmm. part of. And within the year, mm -hmm. Norma Keller invited me mm -hmm. to join. Wow, mm -hmm. good. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. And one of the big things I remember about our involvement in Altrusa is the first soup and cornbread. Oh. Oh, yeah, that was a big memory. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you were in charge of the overall project. And we had a snowstorm. Uh, that, that a disaster. A disaster more like it. snowstorm. Because, <laughs> well, for one thing, we had promised delivery mm -hmm. because we thought that was the thing to do for the working person was to say that we'll deliver to your office if you have enough people to, do, you know. And so we had arranged to deliver hundreds, literally mm -hmm. hundreds. Betty Jo Nichols was in the club yes. at that time. Yes. And she had arranged. I think we wound up having over 400 deliveries that day in the snow mm -hmm. with the help of a lot of men that came in to our rescue. Right. And the snow just got deeper and deeper yes. and deeper all during the day. Yeah. Bob Caldwell kept saying, don't worry, it's going to rain by noontime. Well, by noontime, it did not rain. <laughs> 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 we had lots of snow before the day was out. Mm -hmm. I stayed it. I said I got into Altrusa to promote my business. That lasted about five minutes, I guess, in relation to what, where I am with Altrusa today. Because I, I really got uh, into being with those women and working with mm -hmm. those women. And I really do appreciate how much we mean to the community. And once I went to the first uh, district meeting was when I really got a taste of what all of Altrusa in the, in the world means. Uh, because it's more than just helping Waynesville, mm -hmm. uh, and and that that really was rewarding to me. And you brought the idea of the soup and cornbread from that district meeting, meeting didn't mm -hmm. you? Back to the club, and mm -hmm. that's where that was sort of spawned. And and yeah, we all agreed that we had had a a fundraiser some years prior to that that initially started the seed money for a project that is really near and dear to my heart, which is scholarships, which is literacy is the thrust of Altrusa. And scholarships for us is our way of, of promoting literacy. And we started that back uh, in the early 90s. And we had a, a fundraising project. Do you remember the one where we did with the Rotary Club? Oh yes, that was my first year. Ah, yeah. okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And we raised a, a huge sum of money for back in that late 80s, which was $20,000 It selling art to, from an art auction. And it was divided between Altrusa and Rotary. And so Altrusa had a $10,000 nest egg and we were planning to use it for the development of the arts in Haywood County. But about that time, somebody opened up the Hart Theater and then they built the Western North Carolina Ag Center. Oh, and right. so we, did, we weren't needed in that respect. So that's when we regrouped and decided to use it for scholarships and it's grown ever since. So Linda, what were you doing? What was, you, what was your career? I was, my husband and I came to Waynesville in 86 
and bought a yep. country inn, the Grandview Lodge. Oh my God! And so I was busy. So did Terry buy the, the Grandview Lodge from you? No. Terry he, Ferguson? No, he bought it from he bought it from the bank because okay. the people that we sold it to uh, went bankrupt. And wow! So was, are you guys like the original? No, we were the third. Okay. Set of keepers. And it, I am very proud of what we did. Sure. Um, I you still were the longest owners. Of yes, the because we were there for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And we, I still see people on the street today who say, oh, I wish you were still open. Miss your food. I still have your cookbook and I'm using your cookbook. So, so it, it was a labor of love. I was up at 5.30 every morning, and I was in bed at 9.30 at night, but I worked all day. We served dinner and breakfast, but we had luncheons and brunches and book clubs, so there were... Constantly people constantly. in and out, yeah. So you, you pretty much catered, yeah. catered to the community. Yes, we did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what, um, and I know you guys, you guys are traveling quite a bit together, so what what are some of your differences? Like I can I said, like you're you're very outspoken. I kind of get that energy from you. Well, no, from from her as well. So I mean, just very like outspoken women. Um, you know, I mean, you are convicted, one hundred percent, and and altrusa. So I mean, you definitely come with a platform that. You, it's already kind of like built in your head and you're just a matter of like get the people together and we're going to make this happen. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely a lot of like moxie really in the, in the two of you to be very honest with you. But with that being said, I mean, where do you guys, I mean, where do you balance, you know, like what, what's kind of like when I need this, you know, where do you guys balance each other? She has the question. She does. <laughs> I haven't given that any thought. Me either. Right. Uh, oh gosh. We have so much common things that I'm not sure that we have a lot of uh, sharp contrast. Common right. things are we both, we're neither one TV addicts, mm -hmm. we're neither one tech addicts, we're neither one uh, telephone addicts, we're neither one, we have a lot of those kind of mm -hmm. We both like food. Mm -hmm. The one thing we are different in, she likes wine and I like alcohol the other way. <laughs> I'm not a wino. <laughs> <laughs> Three of us in one room. <laughs> I'm, I'm not always. Uh, we neither one drink coffee. Uh, I'm a tea drinker. She I usually don't even drink it. anything. Yeah, um, just, just water for, for my breakfast. But we're both health, uh, mm -hmm. really, uh, health oriented. Mm -hmm. right. um, we keep the same kind of hours, mm -hmm. which makes it easy to travel together. Because mm -hmm. we're, regardless of where we are, our, both of all four eyes are open before 6 a.m. You know, but they're also closed about 10. <laughs> right. Don't try to have an all-night conversation with her. <laughs> so where's the first place outside of Ecuador that you guys travel together, not on, on a mission or not with Altrusa, but just for leisure for the two of you? We went to the Snowbird Inn out in Robbinsville for a test drive. Test drive. <laughs> to, just to see, because we, we knew we, we knew each other, but we'd never traveled really that much. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to see how it would work. So we went out for a couple of days, and enjoyed the, the food there, and hiked the Joyce Kilmer Forest. And, so, and we thought, okay, this will work. We both, uh, neither one of us, even though we're talking a lot in this interview, neither one of us are big talkers. We don't have to talk to each other all the time. We're neither one chatterboxes. Mm -hmm. But that's important. Quiet time is important to us. I would, I would say that's hugely important. <laughs> in fact, in the evenings, if we're in a hotel room, both of us will have a book to read, and we could sit there for two hours and just read our books. Mm -hmm. Don't have to have a constant conversation. So what is, so you guys just recently came back from like a, a two month trip? Is that right? Or something pretty long? Yeah, seven, seven and a half weeks. And yeah, that's almost two months. <laughs> and where did you guys go? Uh, we started in Lexington, Kentucky. Okay. The horse farms. 
and then we on our way to Niagara Falls. I'd never been to Niagara Falls. So we, we were there two nights, three nights. Went over to Niagara on the lakes. Then from there we drove to Toronto, Toronto to the CN Tower, which we thought, well, this will be a couple of hours and then we'll do something else in Montreal. Wrong. There were 3,000 people there that day, so the, <laughs> the lines were incredibly long for us to to get to the top. So, and then getting out of Montreal, it, it was traffic. Toronto. Toronto. To Montreal. Yeah, to yeah. Montreal. Yeah. So do you? So how often during the years do you do you ladies travel together? Well, this year has been three times. We we are committed to each other to do two times mm -hmm. a year. And one, we have sort of said we'll do one international and one in the U.S. each year. So we're trying to, but we never stick to that. We keep, <laughs> we keep floating away. <laughs> so what is, um, so, okay, for both of you, both question, out, out of all the places you guys have been together, what's the one place that really sticks out? Dear, that's hard. Well, I, I, I had an instant answer on that okay, one. Okay, so what? Oh, all right. Tahiti was this year, and not just because it's fresh in my mind, but it was um, head and shoulders above the rest in that it was peaceful, restful, beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, the only negative it had was long time to fly to get there. Yeah. It, it was the, when I got off the plane and we started walking around and got to our hotel, I said, this is the most beautiful place I've ever because it was just lush and green and flowers everywhere. And, and we had just come from Bermuda mm -hmm. thinking that that mm -hmm. had been beautiful. Uh -huh. right. But Tahiti was still head and shoulders yes. above it. So can you guys list all the places you guys have been together? So we have Tahiti, Bermuda, Kansas, or Kentucky, like uh, horse country, right? You've both been the, all up the west, it sounds the, like. Both ends of Canada, uh, Canada both uh, Victoria, Vancouver, uh, Calgary, uh, all that, and yeah. then then this time mm -hmm. to PEI and and Nova Scotia. But one the one trip that we took right after our snowbird trip, we went from one extreme to the other. We went around the world together. Before we left, I had this fear or this nightmare that we were going to get some hung up in China and not be able to get to the rest of it and it's going to be a domino effect because mm -hmm. everything would fall apart mm -hmm. but everything just click 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 right along we didn't have a delay or anything so do you guys have like um like friendships that you uh, that you hold on to from like younger in your life and how do those kind of compare to the relationship that you guys have having met later in life oh mm -hmm. i do do you mm -hmm. yeah I have, I have friends that I've, i went to school with that I started, that I've been friends with since seventh grade. And she lives right here in town, but I don't have the same relationship with her as I do with Linda. I don't have as close a relationship with her anymore as I do with Linda. Mm -hmm. This travel and this planning and the amount of time that we spend mm -hmm. together yeah. has, has made it far different. And I have a couple of friends that are longtime friends. Uh, a woman in Winston-Salem, because I lived in Winston-Salem for 14 years, she and, and Stan were bridge partners. And I knew her at work as well. And then there was my college roommate that I had, that was, that's been almost 55 years ago that we graduated. And in, unfortunately, on this recent trip, we were going to stop and see her. And two days before we got there, she died. She had cancer, and she she struggled with it for a long time. And it finally got to the point there was nothing else they could do. And when I talked to her daughter, she said, Linda's going to be here. You know, she was hanging on. She was trying to be as strong as she could, but, but she didn't succeed. But those are my two long-term Friends, and then a couple from high school that I will see when I in that area, but we don't have a relationship that we call each other. Or, mm -hmm. uh, so. 
So just kind of thinking, you know, to myself about, you know, girlfriends that, that I, that I have kind of from my youth, not many, I think there might be two. Um, and then, you know, people like meeting like Jen, you know, where we work together and we're in our forties and what do you think, like, what would be, if you had to give advice to, you know, people that were, that are my age of what really matters in a friendship, what, what, what is that? I think it's being there for someone else. I had someone tell me yesterday, I'm sorry I unloaded on you, but I was, I was e ears that she, and she needed to vent. And, and so, you know, just be there for somebody. Um, and for me, loyalty, mm -hmm. loyalty, I'm, I'm loyal to a fault, as they ever hit my friends, and honesty. Uh, um, I try to be direct with tact, Sometimes I succeed, sometimes I don't. <laughs> but at least I'm honest and they always know where I stand. Yes. Yes. So are you ladies are you ladies married? No, we we're, we're we're both You're both widows? Widows. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um so were you guys you guys were clearly friends when you when your husbands were both alive. But still not very close. But not close. Mm -hmm. And our our spouses didn't even know each other. Right. So it wasn't really until you guys both became widows that, that the connection kind of gelled mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. right. That's really interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's really interesting. Well, so I do you think we had, to, we had distractions before? Right. Right. Distractions in two careers and two spouses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Children? Yeah. For me. Uh -huh. And I have two stepsons and three grandchildren, but I have never called Bob and Jim stepsons. Yeah. They're my sons. I cannot imagine feeling any differently sure. about them. What's the craziest thing she's ever done? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh wow, that is kind of climbing the climbing the rock wall <laughs> in, <laughs> in Bermuda. Isn't that was that No, it was, was on the ship going oh. to Cuba. Oh yeah. 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 Right. Climbing the rock wall on the cruise ship going to Cuba. Right. <laughs> but what about what about what about Mary? Oh my. That's the craziest thing. Well I I've heard some stories. <laughs> Chat and witness my craziness. <laughs> when she was dancing on the tabletops at the uh, Oktoberfest in Germany. <laughs> yes, those are the stories. Those are the stories. Those are the stories. And we will be in Germany um, next year on the trip, so we'll see. We'll Not for Oktoberfest, you know. though. Right. <laughs> So I'll let you know if she's back on the tabletop. Take, send, take pictures, yeah? Send us, send us photos. We'll do a recap on the story. Well, I think this is fantastic. I think, you know, I think it's really important, you know, I mean, for me, my girlfriends are, are my everything, 100%. And, you know, I have some friends that, you know, they typically rely more on their relationship, their spousal relationship than they do with their girlfriends. And it's just never been anything that I could wrap my head around. Um, and so it's beautiful to be able to sit here and see, you know, over 30, what did we say, 33 years, mm -hmm. 31 years, um, that this is something to look forward to. Yeah. I think that's a really, really beautiful story to be able to share. And I think it, I think it will inspire people too, um, to be able to kind of reach out to somebody that's in their life and they haven't made that, that gel factor yet. Mm -hmm. So I really appreciate both of you guys sharing, sharing the story with us. What's the number one thing that if you had to describe, if you had to describe Mary in three words or three simple thoughts, what were those words be? And then the same question to you mm -hmm. about Linda. Gentle, kind, and a foodie. Okay. <laughs> She knows what she wants. She's driven. She's very self-assertive. I think she might put some people off if by that. By that. But she's there for you. Awesome. Uh, I agree with Linda on that. If if uh, you're my friend, I'm there for you. I don't care if it's midnight when you need me. I'll be there. Whatever it is. 
But you're not the kind of person that goes out and just hands out friendship cards. Nope. Like, oh, we know each other. Now we're friends. Nope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's an earned, it's an earned Absolutely. relationship. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's another really valuable thing that, that isn't talked about enough. You know, especially in our day and age where there's, you know, so much, you know, bullying and, you know, these kids are walking around dazed and confused. They don't know where they fit in. And, you know, anyone that kind of recognizes them automatically becomes a friend. And then when that friend isn't there, because there's there's been this expectation, this labeled expectation that, oh, you know, she walked with me to my locker. So we're friends now. But now she's not answering my phone or responding to my texts. And there's this, this hurt and there's this. And it's just not understood. It's like, you know, friendship is just like any other relationship. It takes time. It takes effort. Mm -hmm. And you can screw it up. Mm -hmm. Especially with so social media today. Well, yeah, absolutely. They, they screw it up themselves. <laughs> <laughs> I, I they have do. a large family, but it's the same way with my family. I have two, two sons, four granddaughters, and six great-grandchildren. And if I called everybody every week, I wouldn't get anything else done. Right. So there are lots of times that go by that I don't talk to everybody. But when I do talk to them, we just pick up like we're really yeah. dumb. So it's it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, they know that it's that I'm there, and if they need me, they, they can always call they them. Like matter you know. mm -hmm. I love it. And they come by. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you guys had to give any kind of you know words of wisdom to my generation or the generation beneath me, what would it be? Drink more wine. <laughs> uh, um, spend more time with people and family. Uh, I, I guess, if anything, I don't have regrets because I don't believe in that. But uh, there were there were too many hours spent driven on a on a career. But it was a necessity. I had to support myself. I had to. I had to do what I had to do, uh, yeah. but it would have been better it, had I spent more time with family and friends. Mm -hmm. And I, I regret not being able to spend time with my grandchildren when they were 10 and 11 and 12 and could have come and spent time with, with uh, grandma. But they couldn't come in the summertime when they had a break because that was our busiest time. But they did come the week between Christmas and New Year's and they loved it, just being outside. I remember one of the mothers saying when Kirsten got back home, she said, well, why can't I just go out and play? You know, living in a city of Pittsburgh mm -hmm. where you had to know where your children were. But when they were here, they could just be outside. They rearranged all the rocks in the creek across the way. They made new Good dams. Childhood. They, just, they yeah. just loved being outside. And mm -hmm. we spent those times together. And I, So would your kind of words of wisdom or words of advice to the younger generation be similar? Like just spend more time with the yeah. people that you love? Yes. Absolutely. Very good. Well, I'm glad to know that you guys spend time together and make that effort. I think it's I think it's really remarkable. I wish I had a friend that I could think about in my life right now that I could envision doing this with. So, new life goal. So, and, and thank we, you. We spend an awful lot of time together yeah. when we're planning mm -hmm. because we plan our trips ourselves, basically. And so. No arguments? Driving arguments would right. be <laughs> navigation. Right. Navigation would be our thorn right. in our side for both of us. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but other than that, it's 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 peaceful, peaceful, easy flow. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Love it.